Discussion of the American Revolutionary War is awkward in modern times. The neocon globalists, who now control the United States, use their media to demonize words like patriot, rebel, and nationalist. American President George Washington is one of the world's most famous insurrectionists. Yet his statues remain prominent, even though he owned slaves. On the other hand, the American Revolution wasn't sparked by disgruntled workers. America's founding fathers were some of the wealthiest men in the United States. Washington's net worth was the equivalent of $500 million today. George Washington is depicted here raising the first flag of the United States on January 1, 1776 at Prospect Hill in Somerville. This Grand Union flag was identical to the flag flown by the British East India Company, the world's largest corporation. It was formed around 1600 to trade in the Indian Ocean region and gradually seize control of large parts of the Indian subcontinent, colonized parts of Southeast Asia, and founded Hong Kong. The East India Company had its own warships and 260,000 mercenary soldiers, twice the size of the British Army at the time of the American Revolution. This power led to friction with the British government. Were the American revolutionaries secretly allied with the British East India Company? Was Washington seeking their support? The Americans clearly wanted their own empire. Washington later declared New York as the seat of the empire. That resulted in the nickname, the Empire State. See the short video link below, The American Empire in Asia in the 1800s. When George Washington accepted command of the Continental Army in 1775, he demanded the newly formed American Congress provide him with 400 barrels of gunpowder. He got fewer than 40, enough for about 20 rounds per soldier. The British had just moved 200 barrels of gunpowder from Virginia to the Bahamas to keep it out of rebel hands. Isaac Hopkins told Congress that he could lead a naval force to seize this gunpowder. Congress commissioned him as commander of the new American Navy. He took eight ships and 234 newly enlisted American Marines 150 miles to the Bahamas to surprise the British and seize the gunpowder. Hopkins' fleet departed Delaware on February 17, 1776, arriving at the Bahamas on March 1st. The Americans planned a surprise landing at daybreak, but the British had seen the American ships approach and open fire from Fort Montague. The American ships withdrew and developed a new plan for the next day. They would land Marines further from the fort and advance on foot. Commander Hopkins did not place ships to guard the entrance of the harbor. At midnight, the British loaded 162 of 200 barrels of gunpowder on two ships that sailed out of Nassau Harbor. The American Marines landed and demanded surrender of the fort and nearby town, which had few defending troops. The tiny British militia agreed to surrender, as the Americans found only 38 barrels of gunpowder. They loaded this gunpowder and seized two small British cargo ships. Upon return, Hopkins received harsh criticism from Congress and was eventually dismissed from the Navy. The Marines, under the command of Captain Samuel Nicholas, were praised. They grew in number to 2,000 during the Revolutionary War, and Nicholas was promoted to major. He is known as the first leader of the Marines, known as the Commandant. After the war, the U.S. Congress saw no need for peacetime Marines, so they were disbanded and Nicholas discharged in 1783. A question in the modern era is if the British quietly reconquered the United States. George Washington stated the United States should not become involved in foreign wars. The majority of American people were strongly opposed to joining both world wars, but British political manipulation resulted in bloody American involvement. 
The United States established a worldwide empire, and many historians suggest that it's really an Anglo-American empire. But is it ruled from London or New York or the city of London? Few Americans know about the small, semi-secret city of London, which is located in the middle of London. It is a corporation ruled by bankers that is mostly independent of Great Britain with its own laws and police force. Its few ultra-wealthy citizens and corporations don't pay British taxes and are not subject to British law nor the rule of the British royal family. Here is a photo of England's then Prince Charles and the city of London's premier resident, Evelyn Del Rothschild, with ultra-wealthy Rothschild poking Charles in the chest. I posted the Wikipedia link for a generic overview of this little-known world power complex, where it is explained as simply a ceremonial county. I also posted an article by Larry Romanoff, which provides details that suggest the City of London is a haven for sinister billionaires who rule the world. The U.S. government's current adventures in Ukraine and Taiwan prove the empire receives unlimited funding, while recent budget deals froze spending at home. Who rules the United States today?